Hi, welcome to Now in Android, episode number 20. So you remember last time we didn't have that much content? It was because the entire team was really busy producing content that just came out for this episode. We were working on launch content, we were working on content for 11 weeks in Android, we're spinning up a bunch of online community events, tons of stuff going on. Let me talk about it really, really quickly. First of all, Android 11 beta, launched. It was a quiet launch. It's basically a series of videos. So the best way to check out the content for the launch uh, is to go to the playlist on the Android Developers Channel on YouTube. There are 14 videos posted there with all kinds of deep dives into the features of Android 11, as well as information about Android Studio, Jetpack Compose, what's new in Jetpack, uh, Google Play, all kinds of information there. So go check those out. And of course, download and play with the beta. So 11 weeks of Android I have talked about before, uh, and now they're here. So it started last week. First week was people and identity. And what's going on every week, we're focusing on a specific content area. Last week, people. This week, machine learning. Next week, privacy. And on and on through the next 11 weeks. And it's 11 because Android 11, so 11 weeks. You get it. Anyway, people and identity, the best way to check out the content is there's a blog posted on the Android developers blog that summarizes all the information you need to know, uh, as well as has links to all of the content that we posted last week. Same thing will be true for machine learning, but not quite yet. We wait till the end of the week to post that blog. In the meantime, you can always follow what's going on by following the Android developers uh, Twitter handle. Uh, where they post all the content as it goes live. And next week, as I said, is about privacy and security. I'm probably not supposed to talk about that. All right, uh, Android 11 Meetup. So we are working with our online, our communities, our GDG communities, to host uh, these online events throughout the world throughout the summer. This started about a week and a half ago. I called into an Istanbul event uh, with Marat Yenner and Yi Boyar. And then a few days later, I called in with them again, as well as Roman Guy, to an event in Bangalore. And in fact, in about 10 minutes, I'm calling into an event in Berlin. And on and on it goes. Um, so check out uh, the Android 11 Meetups page. Uh, linked in the article and see what is coming to a town and location near you and tune into these events. We're talking about Android 11. We're talking about some of the privacy changes in the release. We're talking about modern Android development and there's more content besides all of that. Android X had many meta releases as it normally does. Let me focus on just a few. First of all, in the alpha area, we had a bunch of releases that just came out. The first one I wanna call your attention to is Hilt. Yes, alpha, but yeah, not really, actually. This alpha version, or this first version, which is 1.0, uh, is coming from an internal version that is production quality. It is not alpha. It's version 2.38 that ships with Dagger. Um, that is why we're saying this is the recommended approach for doing dependency injection on Android. Even though it looks like an alpha release in Android X, that's just because it just made it to the Android X namespace, and there may be some API changes as we get feedback from you as we use it. So we do encourage you to use it, give us feedback, and we will continue developing and approaching stable with it. Uh, on top of Hilt, uh, besides Hilt, we have Paging 3. This is a complete rewrite of the paging library, which is about uh, paging data into Recycler View. This is a rewrite entirely in Kotlin using coroutines and flow, which is pretty nice because the entire library, the functionality is built around this asynchronous behavior of streaming data into this list. Uh, so check that out for uh, all you Kotlin developers out there, um, easier to use. Room 2.3.0, this version of Room is mainly bug fixes, but it also syncs to the changes in Paging 3. So if you're looking at the Paging 3 library, also look at this version of Room. Benchmarking 1.1.0, uh, we actually talked to the engineering team about the earlier version of benchmarking a while ago in the ADB podcast episode number 121. Uh, it's all about being able to measure and log the performance of your code, even setting up a CI system based on performance regressions. Um, this new version adds allocation metrics as well as integration with the profiling tool in Android Studio. It's easier to set things up. And of course, there's a lot of bug fixes. Core 1.5.0 syncs with new APIs in Android 11, like shortcut info and notifications. Security Crypto 1.1, uh, in addition to other changes and bug fixes, now supports all the way back to API level 21, Lollipop. Uh, also uh, in Android X is the stable version 1.2.5 of Fragment. Uh, mainly bug fixes, um, including some backports as of fixes that are currently going into uh, the non-stable 1.3 release. Uh, 
Uh, sample code. So IOSCID is an application that we write in the developer relations team to show developers how to write production apps. In particular, um, it exists for two reasons. One is it is a scheduling app for the conferences that we host, Google I.O. as well as Android Developers Summit, uh, but it is also the place that we integrate code for new features into production applications. So we can sort of show how to use this kind of approach in a real world situation as opposed to just a sample, a small sort of demo sample app, right? Um, so the first reason for iOS get kind of went away this year since we didn't have Google I.O. But the second reason is still there. So we completed work for what we had planned for iOS get for the year, and we've just posted the code on GitHub, so check that out. Uh, the latest version integrates uh, uh, use of benchmarking as well as view pager two libraries, uh, as well as Hilt. So if you want to see Hilt using uh, being used in a real world situation, um, check out IOSCED. There were a lot of articles and videos posted in addition to the ones that are uh, that came out for the 11 weeks in Android that I talked about earlier. First of all, dependency injection on Android with Hilt is an article that was posted by Manuel Vivo uh, showing how to use Hilt. Um, so check that out. Uh, What's new in Jetpack is an article posted by Florina Montanescu. Uh, she based the article, she sort of started from where uh, Yeet's video was working. So Yeet did a launch video for the Android 11 launch uh, called What's New in Jetpack. And he talked about things like Hilt as well as Paging 3 and some of the higher level newer things going on there. Um, this article goes way beyond that and talks about those as well as more information on autofill, seekable animated vector drawable, using the database inspector in Android Studio and on and on and on. So go check out uh, this article to learn what is going on in the latest versions of all the Jetpack libraries. Uh, debugging in Android Studio is another article that's based on another video. So there was a presentation at the Android Developer Summit last fall by the Android Studio team. David Herman took the information from that session and put it into a very long article with lots of really great tips and screenshots showing you how to use this stuff in Android Studio. I learned a ton from reading this. I think others will as well. Things like setting up filters for a logcat so you can see only the information you want instead of the rest of that stuff that gets in the way. Attaching the debugger to a running application instead of always starting it from scratch in the debugger and then getting to where you need to be in the app. Uh, lots and lots of tips on breakpoints that are important. Um, stack trace analysis to nail down which parts of the code are actually uh, coming from your code and are the problem you're looking for, um, and many, many more tips. So check that out. Uh, What's new in System Trace is an article posted by Yi Yang that talks about the System Trace tool in Android Studio. System Trace is based on an internal tool that we had that we then exported externally as well called SysTrace. This came from the Jelly Bean days when we were working on performance, really smoothing out the entire system. And it was important to know what was going on, not just in the threads in your application, but also the system overall. Like how did this event in your application line up with another event going on with CPU frequency or something going on in Surface Flinger? Uh, so, the Android Studio team took the core of that SysTrace capability and they put it in Android Studio. They simplified it a lot to make it more usable. The problem with SysTrace was it was really complicated to use. Uh, so they simplified and made the, the UI a lot easier to use. Um, but there are a couple of differences uh, between that and the other uh, SysTrace tool, um, one of them being the fact that it is actually easier to use uh, and capture data there, uh, and it's integrated in the tool. And the other important difference is it doesn't have information on all of the processes in the system. Instead, it focuses primarily on your running application, as well as the Surface Flinger process, uh, because that is really linked to what is possibly going on with performance bottlenecks and rendering in your code. Uh, so check out the article and also check out the tool. Reification was an article that was posted last time. I talked about it in the last Now in Android. And now uh, Marat Yenner has also posted a video version of that same information. So you can look at that. There are a couple of new docs landing pages that are worth checking out. One is a landing page for Jetpack that explains what we mean by Jetpack and links to important information resources um, for the various libraries that you probably want to know more about. And modern Android development. It's a phrase that we've used for a while. Uh, this landing page helps explain what we mean by this and, again, has links to important information uh, in that area, things like uh, the tools that we're talking about or uh, some of the Google Play technology that's part of modern Android development or the APIs like the architecture component stuff or Kotlin language learning resources as well.
And finally, of course, there were a couple more podcasts posted on uh, the ADB podcast. So most recently was ADB 142, Machine Learning Learning. Uh, Tor and I talked with Hoy Lam and Matei Pfeiffer about machine learning, lots of things in machine learning. We talked to them about MLKit, about TensorFlow Lite, uh, about transfer learning, federated learning, ML models, uh, and uh, the Android NN API, Neural Network API. Uh, my favorite part of that podcast was being able to ask the engineering team, what is the difference between all these things, right? We have all these different names for machine learning technology that we necessarily use uh, and get involved in uh, when we write Android applications using ML. So what's the difference between, you know, what are we doing with TensorFlow Lite versus ML Kit and how does that compare to NN API? So listen to the podcast and learn more like I did. Uh, ADB 141 from the previous episode, Discussing Conversations. So the episode before that, we had talked to Maddie and Arthur on the System UI team about bubbles, about propagating information with people conversations into the bubbles in the UI. And this is another element of that. It's about propagating information from these people conversations into the notification panel, uh, this new feature that we have in Android 11. Uh, so we talked with Julia Reynolds and Stefan Franks uh, from the System UI team. Uh, about how all this stuff works and how you can use it. So as usual, all the information I talked about is linked in the article. So if you want to check out any of this information, go take a look at the article and click on the links. And if you like the video, please like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.